venues. Janine. Thanks so much. Um, I, uh, I think the flying fish is an apt metaphor for what we're trying to do. Um, you can imagine there was a time when, uh, when this fish jumped out of the water and caught a little air. Um, and that successful adaptation was rewarded uh, over and over and over again. Um, and that's how life level jumps. And that's what we're trying to do, I think, right now. Um, the basis of biomimicry, it's innovation inspired by nature. Um, the core idea is that a sustainable world already exists. Biomimicry gets, gives us a practical way uh, to, uh, to emulate those 3.8 billion years of R&D uh, in order to solve our naughtiest design challenges. Um, what's really new about biomimicry, besides the fact that it's, you know, as, as you'll see in, in Michael's presentation, it's, it's uh, unlocking all these incredible innovations. Um, it also represents an entirely new relationship with humans with the rest of the natural world. It is not, it's viewing and valuing nature in a completely different way, not what we, for what we can extract or harvest or domesticate, but for what we can learn. And that's a turning point for the human race. Now, there's three kind of levels in biomimicry. You can mimic form. You know, this is the, the kingfisher beak uh, being put now on uh, high-speed trains in Japan to, to reduce drag. You can mimic process, which is artificial photosynthesis. Uh, this is uh, chemistry, uh, biomimetic chemistry. Um, and you can mimic at the ecosystem level, which is what I want to talk about. Uh, because really circular economy uh, is about ecosystem level mimicry. Um, this is my teacher. This is the pond outside my door that I write about in, in uh, the book Biomimicry. Um, the individual technologies here are incredible and, and have been mimicked. Uh, but together, uh, in ensemble, the real magic trick is how this system manages to clean that water, uh, build soil, uh, freshen that air, uh, keep us all alive, uh, in addition to the organisms that live there. Uh, this is a generous system, uh, and it's my teacher. So what can we learn from natural systems? Uh, circular economy approaches, certainly. Uh, waste is reincarnated in the natural world. It's not so much recycled as it is upcycled into new products. So that log becomes a fungus, the materials in that log. The materials in that fungus are eaten by a bowl, become a bowl. The materials in that bowl become an owl. That upcycling, that continual uh, reuse of materials is what we're talking about in the circular economy. Now, life's got all kinds of approaches, including starting with uh, a safe subset of the periodic table, uh, using a minimal uh, palette of materials, uh, putting those materials together with elegant designs, and then being able to disassemble, disassemble those materials. So the disassembly chemistry is gonna be incredibly important to this whole movement. Um, of course, actually, industrial ecology, putting companies together in food webs so that one waste product or byproduct is the raw material for the next. Um, another systems level mimicry is in the field of resilience, which you're hearing a lot about. Uh, ecosystems, it comes from uh, the, the word, the, the science of resilience is looking at uh, ecosystems that are uh, disturbed and yet come back and retain their functional integrity. And those systems uh, have particular characteristics uh, that companies can learn from, cities can learn from, uh, our society can learn from. System level self-organization, how two flocks and swarms manage to make it look so incredibly coordinated when there's not a single leader. Uh, this, these system-wide lessons are influencing everything from computing to traffic calming to smart grids, to um, how people organize themselves in, in companies and teams. 